contains foul-mouthed, leery comedians who should know better. But they don't. You have been warned. This evening, starring as herself, Deirdre O'Kane! Hello! Okay, that'll do. <laughs> Hello, my comedy cuddlers. You know, I never actually wanted to be a stand-up comic. I wanted to be a singer. Uh, well, actually, I only ever wanted to be a star. And uh, I remember saying that to my career guidance teacher in school, and she said to me, uh, you want to be a star? Fair play to you. And in what area would you like to achieve this star status? I said, well, preferably the rock and roll area. Rock and roll, fair play to you. Can you sing? I said, well, yes and no. It's a bit like yes or I can boogie, but I need a certain song. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> I said, I can only sing country and western. Oh, Jesus, that's a tragedy. <laughs> I said, look, who are you telling? Do you have any idea what an affliction it is to be born with the voice of Dolly Parton and the soul of Jimi Hendrix? <laughs> I end up singing things like, Jolene, Jolene, where are you going with that gun in your hand? <laughs> See, if I'd had the voice on the chest of Dolly Parton, then I might have been onto something. But not at all. OK, let's not go there. <laughs> No, no, I had no, I had no hope anyway. It's the voice of Dolly Parton, the soul of Jimi Hendrix and the chest of Zola Bud. <laughs> uh, God, I hate it when that gets a laugh. But, uh, I'm, uh, I'm very glad, though, that I'm not a singer because there's an awful lot of uh, wishy-washy singers going around at the minute, isn't there? You know the kind who go, boop, boop, be doo and you're rumpy, pumpy, pum. I can't be listening to that at all. I really can't. And I can't listen to those women who speak with little girl voices either. Like Melanie Griffith. I never really grew past the age of five. <laughs> Help me! And her sister, Nancy Griffith. Jesus. She's worse. From a distance, <laughs> the world is blue and green. Go away. <laughs> Very well observed, Nancy. You're up all night. But my favourite, and she runs away with it, is Enya. God love her, she is running away with herself entirely <laughs> with the lyrics. Look. If you really want to, you can fly away. No, you can't. <laughs> you have to deal with things. <laughs> we can't all just go into hiding like Enya. I couldn't take the hassle, I had to buy a castle. <laughs> anyway, I'd say you are sufficiently warmed up now for the first act, eh? <laughs> he's a big guy, handsome, single. That's always good to know that, isn't it? Uh, and he's also a very good friend of mine, so will you please give it up and uh, be very generous and give a huge welcome to Brendan Dempsey. <laughs> Thank you! Oh, now. Thanks very much. That's very kind of you and perhaps just a little bit presumptuous. How is everybody? Good. Oh, that's good. I thought you might be a little bit annoyed. You've all had enough to drink? Yeah, good, fine. No, no, we've been queuing for hours, been here since half seven, only had a couple of points. I don't know, I don't know. Okay, this city you can you can drink anywhere. You can drink after, you can drink until the cows come home. You can drink as long as you get into those super late night pubs that stay open until three o'clock in the morning. And there are such pubs. Seven days a week open until three o'clock in the morning. I know, because I live around the corner from them. <laughs> That's what I'm in. I'm in a special urban renewal zone. Do you know what a special urban renewal zone is? It's a place where they have building sites at seven o'clock in the morning, building more big fucking super pubs. <laughs> 
I don't get to sleep until three because you people come staggering out. You all go in together. The minute you come out, you think you're going to lose each other. You stagger out at three o'clock and you're all there going, Maria! <laughs> Maria! I look out my window and Maria is here, you know? <laughs> But uh, lots, of, lots of fun. I was, I was just, I was recently in England and uh, lovely, lovely time in England, great stuff. But I flew over with Ryanair, uh, the lying airline. Um, <laughs> look at Ryanair, you say to Ryanair, hi, uh, can I go to London? And they say yes, and they send you to London Stansted. This is a new concept in air travel, it's called metaphysical air. Yes, <laughs> metaphysical air, just say the word and then you're there. And they don't send you to London, they send you to London Stansted, which is really just Stansted in the same way that Paris, Texas is really just Texas. <laughs> or in the same way that London Derry is really just Derry. You know, that's, that's what I do. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if Northern Ireland's going to get sorted out. I think people have a big problem, you know, with the Northern Ireland secretary whose, whose name is Mandy, you know. I don't think it just carries enough weight. I can't see the IRA Army Council going, OK, cut out the crap, guys. Let's decommission. Mandy is really pissed off, OK? <laughs> Names are important, they mean things. You know, Puff Daddy, Puff Daddy, there's a man who insists on respect and yet insists on being called Puff Daddy, you know? Now, for me, this is an either or situation. I wouldn't mind my stage name being Uncle Buttfucky, you know, might, <laughs> might bring the punters in, but you know, so like, you know, no respect, none, none whatsoever. So, now. <laughs> you always hear about stalkers, don't you? Always hear about men stalking women. You never hear about women stalking men, why not? Too good for us, is that it? Huh? Think you're better than us, is that it? I don't know what's interesting is. People say, what do women want? I don't know. Women want someone more sensitive, someone who's tougher. They usually want someone else at the end of the day. That's what I usually find most of the time. People get very confused about women. I got a, I got a letter from a young boy because, you know, I work as an agony uncle as well. And so said, uh, Dear Brendan, I'm confused. Me and my girlfriend really love each other. Sometimes we shag for hours and end, and she tells me that I'm really special. Then the next time I go to touch her, she screams at me that I'm a pervert and only want her for one thing. Is this normal? Yes, it is. You know, like, <laughs> it's just the way of things. The solution, I don't know. I say prostitution. I say go to a prostitute. It's the best thing. I know there are a lot of men there who are there going, no way, man, I would never pay for it. But let's face it, ultimately, at the end of the day, you pay for it. <laughs> so why not just be a lot more honest? Think of all the crap dates you've had, all the time and money you've wasted. You add up all that time into man hours. If you come over 300 quid, you have to think to yourself, well, for 300 pounds, you can get a quality job from a professional girl. She'll swallow if you want her to swallow. You don't have to hold her for 15 minutes afterwards. You don't have to meet her parents or anything. It's a much better solution. Anyway, thanks for letting me play with you. I'm Brendan Dempsey. Good night. Hold on there now. Clear you getting in or what? I don't know now. What's in it for us? Well, I'll tell you, if you let us in, Come on in there now. <laughs> Jesus, there's no need for that. That is disgusting now. That's just vulgar, huh? Jesus, we were only being friendly with the girl. Having a laugh. What happened to romance, huh? Slow walks in the park. Going to the pictures. Meeting our parents, getting engaged, putting the deposit on the house, then being taken for a fool when she leaves you for a woman called Nula. Get in there quick! Thank you. Good evening. Thank you, both of you. Most of you seem to be speaking in Braille. I'd like to begin with a quick trick that hasn't been performed in about 60 years. <laughs> in a moment, you're going to see why. It's crap. That's why. Seriously, I am talking furniture juggling. Nice place to sit. 
This furniture comes from the brand new MFI suppository line. You put it up yourself. These are jokes, try and keep up. Hands up if you actually believe I can do this. Bastards, all right? Hands up if you don't think I can do it. Hands up if you couldn't give a shit whether I can do this or not. <laughs> People in the front, just put your hands up. You're gonna die. First thing that goes through your head when you're doing this is that bit. Followed by the rest of the chair. A nice, slow hand clap, loud as you can. Everybody, come on. Even the people at the back. <laughs> Louder! <laughs> Big finish! <laughs> yes! <laughs> wow! Thank you! And how... How can you possibly follow that other than with... Yeah! Bone china plate juggling! That's... <laughs> sleeps while I'm on, pal. <laughs> the whole show's in 3D, by the way. Seriously, if you like real danger, Razor, ooh, ha-ha, ha-ha, knife juggling, so dangerous. Any, any council workers, this is called sweat, by the way. <laughs> Probably a bit more dangerous if we did it here, really, isn't it? <laughs> Come on, last one to die is a sissy. <laughs> Well, I don't know about you, but I'd like to be buried <laughs> up to my balls in Carol Vorderman. <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> give us a consonant now, Carol. <laughs> Second thoughts, I'll have two from the top and one from behind. <laughs> this, this trick is so dangerous. I've just had my hands insured for half a million quid. <laughs> That's a lot of money. I mean, why bother juggling? Why not just retire now? Yeah! California, here I come. How's your dinner now? Uh, 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 uh. Theatrical, ooh, ow! Ooh, ow, theatrical, ow! I hope this is a joke, or I just... <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Quick impression of a Saudi Arabian thief who's just won the appeal. <laughs> ah! You didn't like that, did you? <laughs> One more time, <laughs> just for you. Oh, God. You're all right. <sighs> it's funny. I've got this nightmare about doing that trick with the wrong bloody knife one night, yeah. Your hand flies off and people think you're awfully funny. <laughs> I'm gonna go for the big one now. Yes! Oh. Yeah. Okay, you wanna see some tricks now? Well, I can't read your lips. Do you want tricks now? Yeah. Well, let's all go to Thailand. Find someone who can do them and watch. done a stand-up gig for a while actually because we've been doing all this filming but the last one that I did do I did some material about uh, Michael Flatley and my mother happened to be in the audience and she's a big fan so she was absolutely disgusted and she said to me uh, oh she said you can slag him all you want he's single again he's absolutely loaded he's a great catch I said yeah the catch is <laughs> he's a pain in the hole <laughs> <laughs> but you know they, they say that women fall in love with men in powerful positions and they don't mean Jesus are in a powerful position at the bar there, Seamus, will you get me a pint? <laughs> you know, they're talking about the manager and the trainee, the therapist and the client. 
the ski instructor, and the fucking idiot. <laughs> and before I could drive, the bus driver, because without question, he is the most powerful man on the bus. And to watch him with his eyes fixed straight ahead, drive right past a bus stop packed with punters. No qualms whatsoever. Was sex on wheels. <laughs> or to sit behind him and watch him take maybe two punters on the bus and then go, sorry folks, we're full up. I tell you, he just knew how to make me feel special. Do you know, at one stage I had it so bad for men in positions of authority, I thought if the dole officer said to me one more time, are you looking for work? <laughs> oh. I tell you, I was going to snog him right there. <laughs> OK, I'm going to bring on the next act now. Um, he's simply uh, one of the best. I really love this man, and uh, you're going to love him too. So please give it up for Kevin Gildee. <laughs> Hello. Thanks for that lovely round of applause. Look at this, I got these today, look at that. Rhubarb and custard flavoured condoms. Isn't that disgusting? And at the bottom it says, for that special treat. As though getting a fuck wasn't enough. <laughs> Some people are so greedy. Go on, laugh, you know you want to. Learning disabilities. What's the point in doing that? Life's hard enough already. Do you think if Sting dies, we'll call him Stung? Uh, something happened? Was he Osborne? <laughs> I tell you what I'm going to do now. I'm going to answer some of your questions because you look like an audience who've got a lot of questions you want to ask. What's that? What do I think of the morning after pill? No. No, oh, fair enough. That's a good question to get the ball rolling. Well, <laughs> I think you have to be very careful at the morning after pill because a friend of mine recently, she overdosed on the morning after pill. <laughs> She got propelled into the future. <laughs> so be careful, sir. So what do I think of gondoliers? <laughs> You're an inquisitive audience, aren't you? Gondoliers, what are they? Just failed pole vaulters. <laughs> trying to drown their sorrows. Do I remember my first sexual experience with a lie to share with the rest of the audience? <laughs> oh, you cheeky bastard, you. <laughs> with your little bee positive T-shirt, huh? <laughs> I do always remember the first girl I was ever with, and I was really shy, young, embarrassed, and I sort of just said, uh, listen, do you mind if we turn off the lights? And she said, okay. And we crashed into an oncoming car. <laughs> Thanks for your sympathy. What's that? What do men think of when they're trying to delay orgasm? That's a good question, sir. You know, men do think of things to delay orgasm, but not many men will admit this. To delay orgasm, they often think of the person they're making love to. <laughs> That's true. That explains why women always take so long to come. <laughs> That's a big difference between men and women, isn't it? Women fake their orgasms. Men, by contrast, fake entire relationships. <laughs> Why 
one thing I've noticed, no matter what you buy these days, you get a chance to win. Have you noticed that? I like to buy Mars bars to eat. <laughs> and on the front of the wrapper, it says, instant win. Now, even though I don't want to get involved in that bullshit, somewhere in the back of my head, and go, maybe be me, maybe I'll win. So rip off the wrapper. And invariably inside it says, sorry. <laughs> Better look next time. So all I wanted was a bar of chocolate. Now, I'm a fucking loser. <laughs> you can't enjoy a bar of chocolate after that. Anyway, that's all for me. You've been a lovely audience. Thank you, and thank you. The first series of The Lounge comes to a close this evening. We've had over 40 comedians. I hope you've enjoyed them as much as I have. Quite frankly, I need the break. That's all from my box. A very good night to you. Hello, my name's Fergus Scully. A lot of you might recognize me. I'm very big on the folk circuit in Denmark. Can you recognize me? No? I, re I released an album last year and it went straight into the poppin' charting in Denmark. Straight in like a bullet at number 47. <laughs> you don't write, no, you don't believe me. I got some of my reviews here from the Denmark music press. Here we go. Fergus Scully is like an Irish Benny Hansen Titsenarsen. <laughs> now you might be laughing, but Benny Hansen Titsenarsen is huge in Denmark. He's massive. In fact, he, he represented Denmark in the Eurovision Song Contest in 1986 with his own composition, Chili Chili Ice Pop. <laughs> no, you don't know. Okay, I've got another review here. This is of a live gig. Sorry, there's, uh, sorry, uh, no, don't mention that. Okay, right. That's a bit of hash, a bit of hash, ladies and gentlemen. Anyway, uh, there's a, of a live gig, and it says here, Fergus Cully was like Christy Moore on acid. <laughs> now, that night I did a lot of Christy Moore songs. And it was actually on acid, but uh, <laughs> it was a very accurate review. <clears throat> anyway, a lot of people come up to me in the street and they say, hello, Fergus, how are you? And I go, how, how's it going there? And uh, they say, do you put political messages in your music? And I go, yes and no, because yes, I do, and no, I don't. <laughs> you see, you see what I mean? And. Uh, but anyway, uh, people often ask me, you know, what's it like in the music industry? And uh, I'll give you some advice. There's three types of music you should play if you want to make it big in the industry. There's folk music like I play, then there's rock music, and there's pop. With pop music, you just talk about any old shite, you know, sex on the beach, sand me scrotum, whatever you like. <laughs> I'm going to give you an example of a song that I wrote with my friend in Denmark, Benny Hansen Titsenarsen. And uh, it's kind of a German pop song which I'd like to do for you now, so you can hit the music. And I play the part of Benny and myself, Fergus Gully. Oh, yeah. My schnitzel is so hot. My leather holes are all so tight. Yeah. She has a sun, sun tan, and I want to make a man. She has a sun, sun tan, even where the sun don't shine, and all the fellows fight like the guys from Vietnam, simply for the right to touch her big brown hands. She just smiles, but everybody knows that she has piles of admirers who would come for miles just to touch the hem of. Especially where it goes right up in between it and the sun goes down on the crazy beach and the cool guys come but they're out of reach and then she stands on mid her hands instead of brushing off the sand she brushes off the boys instead and goes home to her suntan bed she has a sun suntan and I want to make a man she has a even where the sun don't shine, she has a sun, sun, sun. And I want to make a man, she has a sun, sun, sun. Even where the sun don't shine Benny has a kiss and I'll on the mic Chitty bang bang like Dick Van Dyke My lyrics so fat, I put them on a diet Rocky Beach Party, it's gonna be a riot! And everybody now, she has a sun, sun, sun. And I want to make a man 
Yeah.